Hey guys, Alex Italander here. I know we're deep into the offseason here for both Ostium and baseball, but have no fear. Season 4 will be returning April 7th, which is also around the same time baseball season gets started too. Anyway, I wanted to give you something for your ears in the meantime, so here's one of our Patreon-exclusive Ostium files. And keep listening after for some important announcements. Enjoy! You turn the handle and the door opens, just as it has many, many times before. This is not new to you. What is, is the alien standing on the other side, apparently waiting for you. You are surprised, but not startled. Perhaps a little anxious, but only a little. You have talked with others who have met people on the other side. People they were able to interact with. It's rare, but not unheard of. An alien, however. This is something new. You step through and close the door behind you, wanting to make it seem like everything is okay and under control. And it is. You are calm and collected. You've been through many doors before. So have a lot of other people you know. And what you bring back from this experience will likely prove invaluable. The alien's face is pale and elongated, like that of an equine species. But instead of pointing outward, gravity has a determined pull on it. There appears to be no nose or mouth or anything below the lower two-thirds of the face. The upper harbors two incredible black eyes, close together. They look like deep pools of ink. The body is long and thin. There are no arms. There are no legs. Just a single, solid form continuing down to some sort of stabilizing appendage. Whether it's a foot or a sucker or something else you cannot tell, the one-piece garment the alien is wearing makes it all impossible to tell. The alien is staring at you, Icor eyes locked on. But there is no mouth, no nose, no ears, no obvious way to communicate. And then you hear the voice, strong, full and warm, in your head. Do not be alarmed. I am merely here to guide you. Please, follow me. You know this is going to be something very different now. But then you also knew that when you opened the door. Each one is something different and unique, every time. You follow the alien, and it doesn't take you long to realize you're on some sort of ship. A starship. The viewing deck, or whatever it is that you're in, doesn't feel too big but the rest of the ship is probably massive. You stop beside the alien, looking out through the view screen, taking up the entire wall. You take in the details and recognize where you are. It is the solar system, and the ship appears to be somewhere between Earth and Mars. But you can tell the view screen must be doing something unusual, providing zooms on each of the planets and the sun, as you know if you were truly looking towards the sun from this distance, everything would look different. Also, there's something not right here. The sun is larger, considerably larger, and brighter. I see you recognize a difference here from your time. Yes, you are not in error. This is over a billion years in your future. Do not concern your time with me and the time I am from. That is not of your concern with this door. I am to show you something special. Unique. Something that none of your kind has ever seen before, and never will see. No, there are still members of your species left. Many. Billions. Scattered across numerous galaxies far from here. But they've forgotten about their past, their history, their origin. Which is why you are being chosen to witness this event spanning billions of Earth years. Now pay attention, and do not interrupt. We have a lot to cover. You try to clear your mind, an insurmountable feat indeed, and elect to try not to think too much about everything you are seeing and experiencing, electing to just take it in and to listen to this alien guide impart whatever wisdom she, he, and or it has for you. It is over a billion years in your future. Your sun is dying, entering the next stage of its existence. 
Almost all the hydrogen within its heavenly body has been converted to helium. An onslaught of radiation is now spreading across the solar system. Whatever may have been left living on your former planet has been obliterated. The Earth is now a devastated wasteland. The temperature has risen, the seas have boiled away, and all that is left is a barren desert. More time passes, and eventually all the hydrogen is used up. The helium becoming super dense within the core of the sun. Over more time, it will expand further, cooling a little. From your planet, it will appear as such. And then the screen changes. It is Earth. Red, hot, and dead. On the horizon is the massive growing red hemisphere of the sun. It takes up almost the entire sky. On the barren ground you can see some sort of relic. An epitaph for the planet. It looks Mayan or Aztec. Ancient stone. The screen changes back and shows a different sun once again. The star has lost a significant portion of its mass. There is less of a gravitational pull on its planetary bodies. Orbits have changed. Venus is now where the Earth once was, while your planet is further away from Sol than it has ever been before. Over more time, the Sun will continue to expand, now a red giant consuming Mercury and Venus while the mountains on Earth have been turned to lava. Meanwhile, in the far end of the solar system, those once frozen icy planets and moons have now become warm and changed, perhaps inviting alien life to come settle, or even initiating the genesis of life themselves. In the final stage of its existence, the sun will grow and contract, the helium in its core fusing together and forming new elements like carbon and oxygen. In its last expansion, it will expand to 180 times its former size. Then, as the helium surrounding its carbon-oxygen core becomes unstable, it will begin pulsing, losing more mass with each pulse. A final pulse will blast away the rest of the sun's outer surface, leaving the bare core, a sphere no larger than the former planet Earth, now a white dwarf star. You stare at the screen, at this tiny thing that was once the sun. Then the screen goes blank. The alien turns to you, looking at you. Nothing is telepathically said. It leads the way back to the door, and you dutifully follow. At the door, the alien waits. You reach for the handle, holding it, and look at the alien. You think of the many things you can say and wonder how you might be able to send them to the alien telepathically. And then you make a simple decision. You give a slow bow, bending low, and then returning. The alien inclines its oblong head. You open the door and pass through, already thinking of what you will say in your report. This Ostium file was written and produced by Alex E. Talander. It was performed by Sam Joan. The music was composed by Chris Fletcher. If you enjoyed this Ostium file, you might consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash ostiumpodcast. For as little as $2 a month, you gain access to lots of bonus material like outtakes, more Ostium files like this one, the Welcome to Your Door series of Ostium vignettes, the Behind the Ostium Behind the Scenes series, and your very own door number. At the $5 level, we'll send you a cool Ostium sticker. And at the $10 level, you'll get access to new episodes of Ostium a whole week sooner. So why not consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash ostiumpodcast. In two weeks, I'll be releasing another Patreon-exclusive Ostium file for you guys. And two weeks after that, I'll be releasing the supercut of Season 3 in three parts, much like I did for Seasons 1 and 2 last summer. 
and that should get you all caught up for the start of Season 4 in April. Thanks for listening, and see you in two weeks.